back to career aspects. Well, if you're watching this video, then you're probably considering coming to study at a university in the UK. You're also probably wondering what is involved and what the process is. And that's what we're going to cover in this video today. This is the first video in a set of videos where we will go into each step in detail. This video is uh, an overview of the whole process. I'll be working from a uh, worksheet that we produce for this subject. Um, we will be producing a set of these worksheets and they will in the future be available on our website. Uh, if you would require any of them we can of course uh, send them to you if you drop us an email asking for them. Um, I'm going to be working from the fact sheet that I've got for this subject for the purpose of this video and I will use the various steps of it as we go through the video. So let's get started. Okay, uh, all of the worksheets and the videos are numbered and sub-numbered. You'll see as we go through the video, you'll see the numbers in the top corner of the screen. So any of the worksheets you use or any of the um, information sheets you use, you'll know what point within the um, system they come, what point in the process that they they fit in so you can you can organize yourself and that's what this business is about it's about organizing yourself knowing the process that you're going to go through so first off on this worksheet is the contents you have to bear with me I'm working from my laptop down here uh, with this worksheet it should also be up in the corner of the screen here and we will cut to close-ups of it when necessary so that you can see it and work through it so first off is the contents, what is contained in this particular worksheet. And we have um, how to use this action plan. We called it a, an action plan because it's a plan of action for you to prepare yourself for coming to study in the UK. So first off is how to use it. The second is the actual application process, which differs from the process of planning which I hope will become self-efficient, uh, self-explanatory as we go through this um, video. So then we get to the, the numbered section. So the first section is why do you want to study in the UK? Then we'll, the second section is what is it you actually want to study, what course, and what university would you like to study at? We need to know these. Um, then we move on to number three, which is the qualifications. Do you have the qualifications required to get on that course? And, of course, what to do if you haven't got any qualifications. Uh, number four is your CV. You're going to need a CV. If you haven't got one, you're going to need to create one. And a statement of purpose, which is one of the big issues creating a statement of purpose. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, document checklist, making sure you have all the documents that you need for your uh, for coming to study in the UK. Um, number six is what is it going to cost? What's the total cost of studying in the UK? Obviously that's something very important you need to know because you, you've got to work out your finances. Uh, then there's post landing, preparing to um, study in the UK knowing all the things you need to know about the UK when you get here, how you're going to deal with food, cooking, washing, all that kind of stuff. Then last, but it isn't, it, it's very important, but it's last, and hopefully that will become clear as we go through it, is your visa application, uh, what you need for your visa application and what you need to do for your visa application. And then there's a final word, which just looks back on what you've done. So... We move on to the next one, which is how to use this uh, action plan. So you can use it in two ways. You can, you can fill it in and use it and keep it on your computer. And then you can create folders and keep um, you, any documentation or anything you write 
electronically on your computer in various folders or you can print it off and do it as like a, a hard copy handwritten uh, thing and keep all your documents with it in a folder um, yeah in a real folder not a computer folder um, we advise that you work through this in a logical pattern uh, you know one two eight um, but you don't have to if you've got the stuff to complete one section then by all means complete that section because it may help you with then complete completing one of the earlier sections so you don't have to work through it in the numeratic logical order um, but we do advise that you do that um, you will find that information in this plan will help you with filling in other bits so that is another advantage of it or of course if you want contact us and we will help you with the whole process so next is the application process now the application process does differ from the action plan uh, the application process is what you actually go through applying to the university essentially not planning to come and study in the UK but actually applying to the university so that obviously the first step of the actual process is getting yourself organized is getting a plan of action an action plan sorting yourself out getting yourself organized with all the things you need making sure you've got them all and contacting an agent if you're going to use an agent and we do strongly recommend using an agent because obviously they interact with the universities they know the university staff they're in the country they can help a lot more okay step two will be uh, the application actually filling in the application for the university once you've filled in an application for your university and sent that in or your agent has sent that in you will then receive a, an offer from the university uh, or if if we've applied to multiple universities which is often a good idea uh, then you might get multiple offers which gives you the option to choose which one best suits you usually the first offer is a conditional offer so there will be conditions that you need to meet with that offer so the next step of course with the university is to confirm that you want the you want to accept the offer and step five is then meet any condition additional conditions that they've added once you've met them conditions then the university will send you an unconditional offer um, which once you accept you then get your confirmation of acceptance your CAS letter which you will need for your visa application then you apply for your visa once you've got your visa you come to England you go register with your university and you start your lessons so that's the application process okay so we'll move on now so we come back now to the main part of this action plan or worksheet for you to help organize yourself and plan yourself for coming to study in the UK and the first thing of course is very obvious question why do you want to come and study in the UK now we all know all the regular common reasons if you go onto the internet and you do a, a search on the internet you will come up with thousands of, of uh, results on why study in the UK and nearly all of them results will give you the common reasons it's good value it's top quality education it's well known all of those kind of things now we already all know those um, but by all means you know put them down if you want but the thing here is to look deeper it ask yourself why you want to come and study in the UK what's special about it for you um, now with this one of the easiest ways to do this is to actually initially just write down the first thoughts that come into your mind doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense when you read it just record your thoughts you think yourself well because of this or because of that write it down then once you've written it all down 
and you've got your thoughts written down, you can then organise it to make sense, and that will help you with that. The other thing with getting it clear right at the start why you want to come and study in the UK will help you when you come to write your personal statement because you've already clarified why you want to come and study in the UK. So that's the important part there. Again, you can come back to this and you can add to it or you can alter it at a later state. This whole plan is uh, ongoing. It's active. You're constantly updating it, constantly changing it, constantly improving it. So you can always come back and add to or rewrite any section of your action plan. Okay, number... Where are we? On to number two. What do you want to study and what university do you want to study at? Choose a few. Uh, we suggest four. Okay, so... Uh, get onto the internet, research, um, ask your agent, ask your friends about universities. Now, this is going to be a compromise because what turns out to be the perfect course may not necessarily be at the perfect university. So you might think, well, wow, um, Brunel. It's a fantastic university. It's perfect. But the course at the University of East London is the perfect course. But that course is not at Brunel University. So you've got to compromise. You've got to work out which one offers the best of both worlds. So look through it. We, we do, as I say, we're going to be doing worksheets to go into each subject more detail. But get on your net, look through list four courses, four universities, and the reasons why and the reasons why not, um, so that you get an idea of what best suits your needs. Okay, we're now going to move on. Excuse me, keep looking down at the laptop. I do apologise. Um, we're now going to move on to number three. That sounded confusing, didn't it? Two, number three. Um, okay. Do you have, or will you have, the qualifications that you need to get on the course? When you were looking at the courses, you um, should be, you, you should have had a look at the entry qualifications. Uh, have you got them qualifications, or will you have those qualifications? And if you haven't, what can you do now to make sure you do have the right qualifications when the time comes? Any documentation to support your qualifications that you've got, scan them and put them on a file in your computer if you're keeping your action plan on a computer, or put them in a folder with your action plan if you're keeping it as a hard copy. Um, remember... English is going to be part of one of those uh, entry qualifications. I'm not going to go deeply into the English at the moment because we are going to be doing, again, we'll be doing videos and worksheets that cover that subject more deeply. But English is important. English is also going to be required for your visa application as well. So English, two, two things on the English, for getting into university and for getting your visa Right, let's move on to the next section. Section four, that sounded better, didn't it? Okay. CV and statement of purpose. Okay. Going to need a CV if you haven't already got one. Just Obviously, it needs to be in English. And use, there's loads of templates out there on the internet. We will also be putting some templates on our website at a later date. But use a template that is generally recognised in the UK. And then your statement of purpose. Now, you, when you're writing your statement of purpose, again, we're doing a worksheet and a template on producing a personal statement. Bear in mind it is personal. It's your statement. Um, 
But what you've written right at the start in that why do you want to study in the UK and the reasons that the pros and cons that you put down for the courses and the universities that you put earlier on, they will help you with writing your personal statement because you've already established why you want to come and study in the UK. You've already established why you want to, why you like a certain course, why you like a certain university. You've already established what other universities and courses you've considered and why. You've already covered that. So that's the beauty of using this to plan for your studying in the UK. So let's move on to the next section, section five. Okay, document checklist. You're going to need a lot of documentation by the end of the day. So keep it all in a folder, uh, subfolders if you need to, in, uh, on your computer or on your hard copy. But here we've got a brief list of the documents that you need so to make sure that you've got them. So you're going to need um, all your uh, history or transcripts of the qualifications you've got of your previous study, your previous academic history, uh, however many there are. So there may be varying numbers of that multiple documents. You're also going to need your English test results. So that document and as I said earlier you're going to need that for your uh, visa application as well so make sure you've got that you're going to need CV you're going to need your personal statement now what you might find is when you start applying for universities personal statement needs to be um, written to that university so you might need to once you've written a general personal statement, you may then need to produce several versions of it which apply to each a university. Okay. Well, again, we will be doing worksheets on this subject to go into these deeper. There will be videos in this set to cover these subjects in more detail. Um, passport, you will need one clear page on your passport for the visa. So make sure that make sure it's valid. Make sure it's got enough time left on it for the time you intend to be in the UK studying. Uh, other documents you will need. There's going to be other documentation you may need. You're going to get your offer letters, your acceptance letters, your CAS letter, which your CAS letter you will need for your visa application. These will all come at a later date, um, but they need to be thought about at this point. Maybe you're going to have um, uh, your flight tickets, your, um, your accommodation. It's going to be all sorts of documentation. List it, keep a list of it, make sure you've got it so that you don't get to the point where you're run out of documentation. Okay, we'll move on now to the next section, which is section six. What is the total cost and how will I pay? So you will also need maintenance documents. And again, we are going to be producing, I keep saying that, but we are all of these. Don't worry if we don't cover it in depth here. There will be later videos to cover this subject in depth with fact sheets and worksheets to help you with it. Um, but you need to make a list of all of your costings so that you know realistically what the whole lot is going to cost. What it's going to cost your university fees, what it's going to cost to travel to the UK, your living costs, um, traveling around costs in the UK, feeding yourself. All of these costs all need to be taken into consideration. Replacement clothing, uh, books, any, all of it. Try and work it all out. Again, go onto the internet and do your research. The UK Visa Department um, set a minimum figure that you must have to cover your living costs and they will want to see that you have this in the bank. They will want to see how you got it and they will want to see if it's a loan. They will want to know how you're going to pay it 
back. Okay, so this is documentation that you're going to need for the visa process later on. Get it organised now though. It's always good to be organised. Uh, okay, and uh, just go over the um, situation again. Just because the visa department give a minimum living cost that you have to show does not mean that's what it's going to cost you to live in the UK. We all have different standards of living. Some of us prefer to eat uh, a lot of takeaway food uh, and go out and socialise a lot. Some of us like to stay in, watch TV, cook our own food. So it's going to cost different people different amounts of money to live because they have different lifestyles. Think about your lifestyle, think about the way you live, research it, work out what it's going to cost. It will cost you more to live in London than it will to, cost to live in the countryside. So research it, look into it. Okay, on to the next section. Post landing preparation for university. So you've got your airport sorted out, you know where you're landing. How do you get from the airport? To your accommodation and how do you get from your accommodation to your university okay these are all things you need to check out they're all things you need to look at the price on uh, books what are the local amenities where are the food shops where are the laundrettes um, where are the local services again get on the internet research all of this look is what what is around in the area Again, we, do, we will be doing uh, more detailed videos and we will be doing worksheets for you for this subject. Right, eight, visa application. Now we've put this last, um, that doesn't mean that it's not important, it is very important, but a lot of the bits that you need for your visa application we've covered earlier on, so that's why we've put this as, as the last step. Um, you need the, the free CAS letter from your university to apply for your visa. You can't apply for the visa until you, well, you can, but um, there's a good chance you'll get refused on it. You really do um, need that. The universities are good because they will ask to see your documentation for your maintenance that we mentioned, that the visa plate people will want. And they will quite often do a pre-visa interview with you to see that you're up to par for doing your interview. Okay? We can do mock interviews with you as well. Um, when you're doing the interview, you will be asked a lot of questions that you've already really thought about and answered by preparing this action plan. So you should be able to answer the questions comfortably because you've already thought about it and you've already answered them in your action plan. So it means that you already, you yourself understand your reasons why you've come to the UK, why you're studying in the UK, how you've arranged the finance. You've already really thought it through using this plan. So it sets you, this, this action plan sets you in very, very good stead for or it prepares you very well for your CAS interview. That is quite important. The final word, um, final word on this of course is university for most people is the best years of their life. It's times that they look back and they remember and they enjoy. Um, they, will, they look at them as good days and this action plan, you can keep it and you can add photographs and comments and things that have happened while you're at university. So it becomes a real piece of sentimental rememberabilia that you have to remember those days and what you did. Also it comes in handy, of course, if you decide to do another university course. And it's something you can show your children. You know, this is what you did at university, this is how you planned for university, and it's something they can use to plan for university themselves. So it really is a good piece of kit for preparing for university. Okay, I really do hope you found this helpful. 
if you've got any questions about how to use it or anything you don't understand about it please let me know in the comments box below and we will try and answer them you can always of course email us or phone us and we will discuss it with you in further detail as I've said many times we will be, we will be producing videos um, on each of these subjects in much more detail so that you can when you get to each, to when you get to a particular step in your action plan, you can go and watch the video, and get the worksheets and the fact sheets for that step in much more detail. Um, hope you found it helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything we can help at all with coming to study in the UK, please let us know. That's what we're here for. All our services are free. Um, please subscribe, please hit the like button if you liked it, please share it with your friends if you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next video that we do. Thank you for watching and bye for now.